Hey, LeBron, uh, the Spurs plus 39 from three tonight. How much of it was their execution uh, compared to, you know, how you guys defended it? What were the challenges? Uh, well, one thing about the Spurs, they always want to execute. They want to execute for 24 seconds, and if you break down, they make you pay. And they've been one of the hottest teams in the league over the last 10 games. They've been playing exceptional basketball, and they, uh, every mistake that we had, every breakdown we had, they made us pay for it. Spurs tonight, um, plus 40 on the bench. Obviously, it's been talked about enough. You guys have so many guys coming in and out. It's, it's hard to find that uh, consistency. How, how challenging has it been you know, for you, you and Russ to, to try to get someone else going as well? Well, I mean, obviously, that's the. I mean, we want to play as a team every single night and you know, try to get guys involved and move the ball from one side to the other. That's me and Russ, uh, um, you know, our objective and, and our roles of the team is to not only, you know, get ourselves going, but more importantly, get our other guys going. And tonight, um, you know, we didn't have much going offensively. Hey, LeBron, I understand there's injuries, but beyond needing a f full roster, what else do you think? you guys will need to be able to be the defensive team that you want to be. Say it again? B beyond having a full roster, what do you, else do you think it's going to take to be the defensive team that you want to be? Uh, I mean, we don't need a full roster. We just need a lot of our guys back. All our defensive guys are in safety, safe and healthy protocol. Avery, Bays, TA, and Austin. No, that's all our defensive guys. I mean, we got a couple more, but those are our guys. Uh, LeBron, you guys are banged up. Uh, looks like Brooklyn is just going to get across the line for enough guys to, to play on Christmas. Um, is that game to you kind of lessened by the circumstances of both these teams? Uh, well, it's a game that both teams um, want to win. You know, no matter well, no matter the circumstances, um, is it going to be one of the um, premier games that I'm accustomed to playing with on Christmas? No, so many guys are out. Um, you know, this whole protocol thing has, uh, you know, gotten the, gotten the worst of a lot of teams in our league right now. So it won't be as um, as star set as I've been. I think I've been. I think I've played probably on the best, the best Christmas Day game um, ever. You know, us of course going state in Cleveland uh, was a, was a was a monster game, and I've been here for a few games at Staples as well. First Kobe and those Laker teams. So, um, but it, it's always exciting and. and uh, you know, and an honor to, to be able to, to, to play on Christmas for sure. LeBron, you, you've talked a lot over the course of your career about the challenges and embracing challenges and problem solving kind of on the fly. It seems like it's something, a part of the game that you really enjoy. How do you go about attacking the challenges and the problems of this season? Because they seem so unique. Well, this is the unknown, obviously. You don't know. Um, this is, like I say, I say every year it has its own challenge. And this is another year where you can literally have one guy one night and the next guy you won't. You really don't know. It's up in the air. You know, and we literally just seen that in having T.A. last game and then we wake up this morning and say T.A.'s out. You know, so, um, you know, we, so it's just, uh, it's the unknown. You know, it's a, literally a crapshoot every single time you take a test at this point. Uh, of who negative and who was positive and, you know, you just got to see who's, uh, who's available and then and go, with, go from there. You've been on teams where you've been able to kind of, you know, you've said, I've got broad shoulders for a reason. Where I, you've been able to do it. Um, is this the equalizer, this sort of total level of chaos that we're seeing right uh, now? No, it's, it's, it's different um, because even in the past, um, it's not like we ha have multiple guys that were out. You know, we were just trying to figure, figure out how we can, what's the best way for us to win, how, we, how do we win, and what's the best lineups to be on the floor. You know, let's log these minutes. We can get better and better and better. We literally haven't had an opportunity to log in anything. We don't. We, we don't know. We, like I just said at the last game. We, what is? We have no chemistry with any lineup, um, from the simple fact that we literally haven't logged enough minutes. You like? They must like that one. Start typing fast when I said that. One. Yeah. But it's the truth. We, what is our starting lineup besides me and, and Russ and AD, and, and AD or? AD and Russ, or me and Russ. You know, we've both been out, so we don't know. Hey, LeBron, Rashawn Haylock, KTLA. Where does the lack of continuity show itself more on the offensive end or defensive end, and in what ways? Well, defensively, I mean, I mean, before tonight, obviously, we gave up a ton of points tonight, but defensively, over the last month, we've been, 
you know, we've been making strides and, and been really, really good, obviously, when we had, you know, our guys in the lineup. But offensively, you know, when you're not, you know, logging enough minutes and you're not, um, you know, on the floor where you know you're going to be on the floor with certain lineups throughout the course of a game, that's where um, it can get challenging for you. Last two. LeBron, um, you know what you're just saying about how you don't have any chemistry with any lineups. Obviously, we know the state of this team. The NBA has kind of taken a, um, you know, the show must go on sort of uh, attitude toward things. And you guys are a team that are, has been trying to put it in gear and, and make a move up the standings, and, and results matter. Um, can results matter right now, given where you guys are? Is this just sort of a survival sort of stage? And how do, how do you look at I've literally been that? saying it's survival of the fittest at this point. You know, like I said, it's just the unknown, man. Listen, we're just without so many. We have our head coach as well. So, um, you know, that's another leader to our, to our, to our, to our group, another bunch. So it's um, survival of the fittest, and, and hopefully everyone is doing what they need to do by, you know, stand. But literally, that's all. We, we just come to the facility and go home. It's not like people have been out and about right now, you know, and just getting these, uh, you know, positive tests. And, you know, knock on wood, I hope I don't. I hope I don't run into it again, but it's, the, it's really the unknown. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's at, and just try to stay as healthy as possible. Last question, Zoom, David Benjamin. Hey, Lorraine, you've had um, some bad luck with injuries over the last couple of years, and you've been able to push back to be the productive player we're accustomed to seeing, um, but you haven't had a torn Achilles. Um, Kevin Durant, what he's been able to accomplish for the Nets. You know damn wood. Is that wood on the back of that, on the back of your computer? Is that wood on the back of it? Huh? Uh, okay. Shit, Dave, you hit me. I'm sorry, NBA, no curse. But, I mean, after that question, I have to say, don't hit me with the, just a severe injury. I got you. Go ahead. What KD has been able that, you, look at your reaction. That's the injury to basketball players. Like, oh, my gosh. Uh, but I, I, but I, I, I would agree. Uh, to disagree, I think, uh, and obviously in the 90s, you know, you look at, um, you know, Isaiah Thomas. And you're talking about Pistons, Isaiah Thomas. You know, when that, when that injury was happening in the 90s, they really didn't know how to, uh, I guess, treat it, how to surgically repair it to where you can come back at full strength. Um, I think now, I think, you know, the, through, you know, medicine, through, you know, a lot of study, through a lot of doctors, we've had some more successful comebacks from that injury. Um, and when you, if, if it was one or two or three, a couple, a few guys in this league that if they had that injury, I would believe that they would come back at full strength. I think there was never any doubt from myself or anybody in this league, maybe KD, maybe early on, because it's just that injury, but I think once he got going and once he started seeing the improvement, I don't think it was any doubt um, that he would come back in full strength. I heard there was only like really one group of people that had any doubt on him coming back full strength. I'm not going to name them. I'll let you guys do that research. Um, but other than that, no, um, there was zero doubt that I knew he would come back in full strength. I mean, it's not like, you know, he's not a guy who carries a bunch of muscle and a bunch of weight on his body, um, you know, very, you know, slender and, and slim. And so it's like it, it wasn't much pounding going on on that particular area um, that he had to worry about. And he doesn't look like um, someone that, that sits around and, and, and doesn't take care of what he needs to take care of. So um, it was never it was never a question about Katie coming back from any any injury. Um, that's just a, the, the player and the person that he is.